Hey everybody, JT here, back with another quick news video for you. Now yesterday, Octopus Energy snuck out a new product. They are entering the EV charger market with a new product called Octopus Charge. Now, there's very few images of this on the web, but I did manage to find one on a website called Current, or Current News. Um, here you can see the, uh, the charger itself. And today we're going to dig into what is it, what does it do, when is it going to be available, and do we think this is a good idea? So let's start with the announcement. Now Octopus put this out yesterday um, on the 19th of June. Uh, Octopus Energy today launched its very own home EV charger, the name Octopus Charge. I'm sure they spent a long time coming up with that one. Um, I'm not going to read the whole uh, press release. I will put links to the website and everything all in the description of this video. But this is an EV car charger that is obviously designed to work with Octopus Intelligent Go and the Octopus Drive Pack. But is this, the, is this really a game changer? Or is this Octopus just reaching a little bit too far? So what did they exactly announce? Well, Octopus Charge, they say, is the first home EV charger by Octopus. It is smart, it is sleek, and it is solar ready. Um, it's designed to work with Octopus Intelligent Go and the new Drive Pack, which we talked about uh, a few weeks ago. And they're going to offer the first 100 customers 5,000 free miles of driving um, if they take one of these chargers. However, before you all rush to the website to sign up, because you might think, well, I might get 5,000 free miles, um, this is going to be launching in August, so not available immediately, in August, and only to Octopus EV lease customers to start with. Now, they do say their intention is to make this available to all customers, but to start with, only Octopus EV lease customers. If you go to the Octopus site uh, and obviously look for EV charging, the, the banner, as you can see there, Octopus Charge is here. Um, register your interest. But if you scroll down, you'll see that they already work with a number of existing charge point providers. Um, the My Energy Zappi, which I have two of. Um, the Hypervolt, which um, according to um, some electrician friends of mine, um, say is one of the easiest uh, charge points to install from an electrician's point of view um, and then the Omi HomePod and the Omi ePod as well. So I'm starting to wonder whether these relationships are going to suffer because obviously when you start to compete with your partners your partners are going to get a bit upset because the amount of business that these companies will have been seeing through Octopus is going to decline. Is this a good idea? Um, so Let's just think this through for a minute. You know, Octopus, I think, personally, um, are a great energy company. They're tools to allow me to manage my tariffs, um, to export my energy. All love all of it. It's great. But this is a little bit outside of their area of expertise. This is not their core business. And I know they have a, a heat pump business where they manufacture heat pumps, but they actually bought a company to do that. So they bought the expertise into the company. Now there is no mention here whether Octopus um, actually acquired a company to build this. Um, if anyone recognizes the look and feel, please do let me know in the comments. But right now they have no history of building chargers. And a bit like I said when they introduced the cozy heat pump, I'm not sure I'd want to be a beta tester for a new product. Because if you rely upon your car to get you to work in the morning and this thing has a problem and you've plugged it in and you get up in the morning to go to work and the car hasn't charged, that becomes a real issue for people. So the question is, is, is this an in-house developed product? If so, where did they get the expertise from to build such a product? Did they actually talk to anyone, uh, any of the electricians that install these products? Because um, for some of, some of you know, um, I use a company called Artisan Electrics. Artisan are well known in the industry here in the UK, mainly because they put a lot of their work out there on YouTube. So you can actually see the quality of their work. And there have been a number of videos over the years with Jordan and the team um, installing chargers. I think Jordan's installed like a dozen just on the side of his own house. 
and they talk through not only how easy it is to install, but how well thought out the installation process is from an electrician's point of view, to allow the electrician to, to install it really easily and get it up and running. So um, any electricians out there who have seen one that looks like this, do let us know what you think of it. And if anyone, you probably can't actually tell us if you've been involved in the development of this product, but I'd love to hear from an electrician um, who gets to install one as to what they think of this particular product. The other thing with a brand new product is we don't know anything about the reliability. Um, you know, are they going to see a number of failures in the first year um, whilst they sort of get the second rev of the product built? So I would be a little cautious about rushing to the website and putting down your money, um, even if you do like the look of the, the charger. Now, the next thing that really jumps out at me is they obviously talk about the integration with the tariffs. And in this particular article here, if I scroll down a little bit, um, it says, you know, the UK's biggest energy supplier was designed with a new charger to work alongside its smart energy platform, Kraken. Now, for those that don't know, Kraken is a platform that um, a part of Optimus has been developing. The idea of Kraken being it becomes like the Bluetooth, that their words, not mine, the Bluetooth of the energy industry to allow devices from multiple manufacturers to all work together. Now, since they made this announcement and about making Kraken available to all sorts of other energy companies, I haven't seen anything about anybody taking them up on it. Now, again, this could all be happening in the background. We just don't know about it. But if this is a Kraken device, does this limit who you can use it with? So obviously you might be an Octopus customer today. You might install one of these and then Eon come along and go, you know what, we're just gonna, we're gonna crash the price of cheap electricity. Um, and you decide, hey, I want some of that. You move to Eon. What happens to your charger? Does it just become a dumb charger at that point? Does it even work with another provider? None of this has been detailed. Now I know it's early days and there's only a press release and a single image, but that kind of thing is really important. And uh, that's something that I will ask of Octopus PR as soon as I get the chance. Now, another thing that's kind of jumped out at me with this is obviously today, as I said, they work with three or four other brands. And I think, as I said, they're gonna see a reduction in their business because when customers come to lease an EV through Octopus, they will bundle in the new charger. It's, you're gonna need a home charger. If you haven't got one already, we will provide one as part of a package. And this will nudge customers towards this becoming the default. And only if customers absolutely say, no, I really, really want a Zappi because maybe I've already got an Eddy and I want to keep it all in the same ecosystem, um, will you get possibly the option of another charger? And I think a lot of this assumes that the customer doesn't really care about the charger. I need a charger, install a charger. And for a lot of customers, that might be true. You know, we none of us care about what kind of petrol pump we use when we fill up a gas or a petrol car. Um, so why do, would we care about the EV charger, what brand it is? Well, as I say, if, you're, if you already have maybe solar and batteries, you already have an ecosystem that you run your entire system on, having a charger that neatly integrates into those so it can use uh, excess solar might be really important to the customer. So hopefully this won't be a mechanism for Octopus to just start to push these on customers because the customer might be happy with it for the first year, but later on, they might realize, hang on, I've made a mistake here. And, you know, this is going to cost me 800 to 1,000 pounds to put right. So why are they starting with lease, lease customers? Well, I think really it's probably the easiest route to get some of these into the market, to do some testing. These are already Octopus customers. They already have a billing relationship with them. And it's just easy to launch a new product that way. Um, these customers are less likely to object, um, you know, if they turn and say, well, you've got an Octopus EV, you get your energy from Octopus, have an Octopus charger, they're probably going to be more amenable to that. And I think this will make a good pilot group before they sort of unleash it upon the general public. Now, the press release is a bit thin on details, but there are a couple of things in here that I, I really like. Um, they say it's a very simple design and looking at the uh, the pictures there, um, it does have a, a, according to looking at that picture, a white LED on the front there. Um, I don't understand this compunction amongst charge point vendors to light their charge points up at nighttime. Um, I don't want LEDs on the front of it. I want the thing dark 
If I walk up to it at night and touch a button, by all means, light the thing up, let me see what I'm doing. But it doesn't need to be lit up, it's certainly with logos, with LEDs behind them, those kind of things. So a white LED, um, I don't want people, I don't want it, people being drawn to it. I don't want people saying, what's that white LED? Oh, let me go and have a look at that. Darken the thing, stick some black masking tape over it or something. Um, but yeah, simple design, it doesn't need to be complicated. But for those of you that watched my video from yesterday about the EcoFlow cloud outage, I hope there are buttons on the front of this somehow, even if they're, they're touch buttons that don't show up in the image or some way to control this that does not require the cloud. Because if the cloud goes away for whatever reason, whether that's Octopus's systems go offline or your internet connection goes down, this thing needs to operate and you need to be able to control it locally. Um, it comes with built-in 4G. Now, they say for areas where the Wi-Fi is not great, um, having 4G built in means that it can obviously communicate with Octopus. Who's paying for the 4G? Um, obviously, if you're a paying customer, um, are you paying, is it added into your bill? If you take the Octopus Drive Pack, is it included? You know, uh, the, these telephone companies don't give away 4G connections for nothing. Are Octopus just sucking up that bill? probably because they'll want the data into their Kraken system. So what happens if you move to Eon or to another electricity vendor? Does your 4G stop working? Do you then have to figure out how to get the Wi-Fi to be better in that area? Um, it sounds great having built in 4G, but I'd need to know, need to know a little bit more about it. Um, I already mentioned, you know, visible controls. There doesn't look like there's any there, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Um, they just might not show up in this. And this, to be honest, is probably a, a computer rendering. And again, I need to know more about the reliability. There's nothing in the press release about testing, uh, the mean time between failures, all of that kind of stuff that you would expect. And we would certainly expect that before this product launches. Now, I think this is a really clever strategic move um, and it makes sense for Octopus. Whether it's the right move for the customer, I'm not so sure. It risks narrowing the choice because obviously all of the other vendors that, that sell their charge points through Octopus, they probably won't be in a year from now. Um, as sales start to drop off, they will look at this relationship and say, is this a good idea anymore? You know, do we want to be spending time and investing money into this relationship if we're not getting sales out of it? So the likelihood is those vendors will strike relationships with other energy companies. And that means Octopus might end up with one single choice for their customers. Um, again, need to know a lot more, but I thought it was interesting. I thought you guys might uh, have some thoughts on it. So please do, you know, leave your thoughts in the comments below. Um, let me know, would you be happy using uh, an EV charger in your house that was linked to your energy supplier? And with the possibility that if you were no longer a customer of that energy supplier, that it may not work or it may have some form of reduced functionality. So anyway, I hope this has been interesting. Um, again, please do let me know any thoughts in the comments below. And if I'm lucky, I will see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.